In today's video, you will find out how to improve nails that are becoming pincer or trumpet nails and a couple of reasons why toenails change shape. One being posterior tibial tendon dysfunction. There is a lot of detailed cleaning around these toes, electric file cuticle removal, and a reverse slow motion clip. So stay tuned. You mean curly toes as when they're going like this when you're walking? Mm -hmm. Toenails. Oh, the toenails, okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Ah, uh, they, I sacrificed the toe. <laughs> and so he couldn't put any, he couldn't put any hypocure. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe and turn on your notifications in case you are chosen as the winner in the random comment game. Pay for the hypocure because to them it's for a metal. So wow. I pay for the surge rest. Would you mind? Right. So you, I, you have to retrain it now. If if it's just how many years have they been like this? I would say I would say by this one has been like that forever, and this one started to misbehave. Oh, maybe like three years ago. Back. So the. But I've always had the little bad ears. Okay. Little bad ears. Yeah, they stick out there on they're, the sides. They're, they, they're like ingrown. If I if I wait long enough, they'll get ingrown. And that's why I had to do that on that one toe. Mm -hmm. it was, I couldn't walk. So you probably have them at the longest they've ever been. Mm -hmm. I have not had my pedicure for five and a half weeks. And I can't go that long. Right. I mean, I, a month is like pushing it, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So I like to go like every three weeks just because of my bad ears. And if I wait longer than that, I'm I start getting I can't even go look at what So when people start to get pincer nails, uh, the tissue from your nail bed sometimes gets pinched up underneath here, so I just want to make sure that you can't feel any of this. Before I trim them, because I don't want to cut you. The left side just relax your toes. of right. her <laughs> second toe is actually curling underneath the nail plate, and when I first squeeze it, you can see I've got both of them in there, so I had to stop, back up, make sure I got the blade in between the part that was curling underneath, because if you sandwich both the top and the bottom of the nail in between the blades and squeeze, it is going to hurt, and you might catch skin in between. So you've got to just get the nail plate in between the nippers, and then um, cut slowly around in a U-shape until you remove the length. Now she has what she calls bat ears, which is uh, a cute little name. You see the little bat ears? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's like I got but I actually think on. that is the outside sidewall okay. kind of flipping up well, the, from the way that, that she walks. Gets because um, of the way that you walk and there's, you know, not any nail there, so. But the part that digs into the center of your nail bed is the part that curls under right here. Mm -hmm. So it's not fungus, is it? Mm-hmm. Is it? Yeah. You have, like, this is called white superficial onychomycosis, the yellowy-orangey color and the mm -hmm. white spots. They cause really bad dehydration in the nail. Okay. So once you start using, the, we have a product that you put on every single day. Mm-hmm. 
and it'll add moisture to your nail and your nail will start to flatten out. Now, because it's pinched this tissue up inside of it, it takes a while for the tissue to go back down. But when the nail flattens, it, and the grooves will start going back to where they're supposed to be because right now they've scooted all the way over toward the center of your nail. So they'll start to grow back up straight again. And the amount of change also depends on the so way someone walks and the pressure from their shoes. I can put a tiny band of acrylic just at the base or mm -hmm. your nail tech can the next time that you see her. You should probably use the nail mycosis for at least a month first so you can see how much movement the nail gets. Okay. And then once you see those ends lift up a little, she can put some at the back so when it grows that the width at the back stays the same width as it grows up the nail okay. it's like a, a um you know like a, a band like a cast you know it's gonna keep it right in that shape so do you think that there's hope for me i do i do think there is hope for you because i'm about to just say take them <laughs> no they'll they'll be okay I did. You can turn it back no, on. It's okay. I'm going to shut this so you can turn it back on. Are you, mine the smallest pinch of nails you've ever seen? No. Really? Mm -mm. Even as long as I could for you. It's just that one nail, I just, I had to do something. Mm -hmm. I had to get it. It was in my skin. And it's hard to determine how much to take off of the length because when your nail bed is squished up inside of there, you can very easily cut yourself. Oh, I know. That's right. And it was cut. It was catching on all my shoes and my, my toes were catching on everything. It almost like lifted because of that tissue underneath it, it mm -hmm. kind of lifts up to a point. Mm -hmm. So it kept on catching on everything. thought it was because I didn't clean around my nails good enough and I'm like no it has everything to do with the way I walk and my surgery and my foot you just don't get it yeah several things can it's like a perfect storm thing yes. you know it's not the just, equation it's equals just, it's just not one thing you know no. No. But once we do remove some of this excess callus on the sides of mm -hmm. your nail, then the nail, when it grows up, it's not going to be running into anything hard. Okay. So your nail grooves can begin to move position. So there's hope for me? Yes, there is hope for you. You want me to come see you at first? And, and, and you know, because... I mean, I got a nail lady, but I'll come see you. Yeah, if you can come back in four weeks and... Can I come back in three? Four weeks is so long. Just, you, yeah, you can. I just, do, do they grow enough in yeah, three weeks? Yeah, oh yeah, they okay. do. Believe me, they do. Four weeks is just, I, I should have, when I made my appointment with you, I should have just said three. Right. Because, well, because I, I called five days after my last pedicure, so... 
minute because it's the holidays and stuff, so. I'd rather come back in three. Yeah, and then we can put the band of acrylic once we see how much the nail is flattening out. to wear polish for the next three weeks so the nail mycosis can penetrate into all of the nail plate. Okay. I've watched almost every one of your videos. Like, you have? Yeah, I have. I'm like a fan. Thank you. I'm so glad that you, uh, you're you close. My my primary care physician, that he, he works out at Brighton and Selena, so. Oh, nice. Are you ticklish? Sometimes. I just can't believe I'm not in pain. I'm really gentle. Yeah, I'm not gonna hurt you. I, I sometimes, well, my girlfriend, you know, she's been doing nails for like 30 years and sometimes I cuss. She's like, just don't cuss, okay? <laughs> yeah, I don't see that. <laughs> <laughs> Now, don't you think that that helps having that little drill to, to get it thinner? Mm-hmm. Yep. So how long do you think it takes to cure something like that? Or is mine This one have takes to about managed? six months. But, managed. you know, depends on how long... I mean, it took years for that skin to get pushed up inside of there. So mm -hmm. who knows how long it's going to take for the skin to relax back down into its position. Okay. But to begin letting it relax down into the position, you have to take the pressure off of the sides of it. Okay. Do you think because of my stent and my ride where I'm on even and foot is getting trained yeah the, the, yep, the way think, that you're walking do you think that it's just something that's going to have to be managed yeah i do especially when i saw you pushing on you know these toes kind of curl under like this mm -hmm. and the floor is pushing because you have a little callus in the same spot on all these toes so it's, it's see everything i have like i have eczema i have which is not good So, the things I have is managed, you know? I have some little silicone toe separators, though, that might help. Because it'll spread your toes out a little bit. Are they uncomfortable? No, you can't even feel them. Do you just wear them, like... Because I, I'll be honest with you, I just don't wear... I always have to be in my shoes. So. Yeah, you... No, you put them on... When, yeah, no, and then you put your shoe on. No, you wear them all day. Really? Yeah. On my online store, go to pedicure supplies and then silicone toe correction. Well, you can try it, Mom, before you leave and you can decide. Just because my foot is getting used to my stack, like all my ligaments in the top of my foot are getting used to that. How long has it been in there? Well, I had my operation August of uh, 2018, so it okay. takes like two years for your ligaments and everything to get used to it. So, 
I'm like limited on my shoes I can wear and you know, while I'm in pain. And what's its job? It's a door stop. Instead of like if I have no arch and the arch is rolled over, it's a, I have this disease called PTTD. What it does is it holds up your arch like this. Oh, okay. Instead of my foot well, like this. Oh, okay. It holds it up. Right. And instead of getting eight screws on the bottom of my foot. Right. See, I've researched. That's the reason why I found out about you. I've known about you. I'm like, I love you, but I'm going to a specialist. Because <gasps> as soon as I saw where you had your trumpet videos, mm -hmm. I was like, that's who I get to see. Like, I won't even go to, like, a normal place. Like, my girlfriend, she does do my toes in, in our house you know she's licensed and everything but I won't even go to like a place because I have such difficult toes people don't know how to cut trumpet toes they just do not know how to cut them mm -mm. They, they're like they, they either make them worse or I come home and I got my bad ears still and it, it, it's like it's nothing's done have you found that to be true um I don't know. I, I don't get a lot of information about other people attempting to take care of them, I guess. How did you become so good at your craft? I think just by doing it and researching ways to... I was always really good at science and physics. Mm -hmm. So when I look at something, I try to imagine. So what is your, what is the PTTD? It's called PTTD. And women get it, um, believe it or not, they get it around the same year. They go through menopause. Yeah. It's hereditary. Usually runners get it, or you have to have some kind of a trauma on your foot. You can get it if you're low and even, and you can get it if you're overweight. So, the trauma I had on my foot that year was not breaking my leg 14 years ago. That's my unevenness. Okay. It's having those bad inserts made for me. Oh. And they said it was like walking on cement for me. Oh. My, my old guy that made my inserts for me, he used to make it the old-fashioned way. We'd sit on the ta table, and he'd wrap your foot. Okay. So then he'd see the natural arch of your foot, and he sold his company, his practice, and I won't say they're in Brighton, but if they bought them out, and they don't do it that way, they just put your foot and they press it because of those that. that so uh, what do those initials stuff. stand for? It's a. Uh, I I don't know what it stands for, but basically this is what it is. You have a, I don't know if it's a tendon or a ligament that runs down this, mm -hmm. your foot, or if it's this side of your foot. Right. And what it does is it holds up your arch, so it fails on you. Okay. So, so it's probably that, like posterior tendon. Yeah, it's a tendon. Something It's, it's called disorder. PTTD. Well, okay. I was close. And it's called posterior tibial tendon it, dysfunction. Um, when they've had... And it's a condition caused by changes in the tendon impairing its ability to support the arch. This results in flattening of the foot. It's often called adult acquired flat foot because it's the most common type of flat foot developed during adulthood. So I did my research and I found out about this. Okay, so this third toe might be sensitive. sensitive. Okay. And that's I'll... my fault. I'll be careful, I promise. That's my fault. So what do you do for a living? <laughs> I take care of my house, my animals, my family. I do taxes. I do the bills. I do basically everything. But I, I used You're to a run, household engineer? Yeah. <laughs> I used to uh, run a business, uh, a wine and cheese shop out in Southfield before I had my daughter. And it just, when you look at, I, I did that and then I office last year. So this year I'm getting, because I'm getting carpet through the whole house because I can't live on wood floors. So um, 
which we don't have wood floors, but I would get wood floors if I didn't have a foot problem. So I'm just replacing my carpet. So I'm doing it in three years because I can't do the. The last time I replaced carpet, I did the whole house at one time. I'm not doing that now. Too long. So I'm, I'm, I did my office and painted my office uh, last year. And this year I'm doing the dining room, which is basically more like my daughter's dorm room because uh, she doesn't go away to college. Are you doing different colors? Yes, I am. My my now my office I did in purples, but they're so pretty, so pretty. Four different colors. I did the door in the closet, darker shade of purple, and then trim like lighter shade of purple, and then medium for the walls, and then the ceiling. It's white, but it has a hue of purple on top. I can show you pictures of it. It's turned out beautiful. I mean, it's not gaudy. It's very, it's pastels. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my living room, I mean, I'm not my living room, but my, my living room, my, well, my living room, my dining room, my hallway, the carpet's being replaced. And <coughs> the kitchen and the dining room kind of flow into each other. So, I'm looking at grays, beige, and blue. That'll be nice. So, that's the colors. The co but I don't know what color, like, when I did my office, I had a wall, and I just ordered samples from Home Depot. I like bare paint, by the way. Mm hmm And so, and that carpet is going to be the dining room, great room, and hallway. It's going to flow all the way. So my kitchen, you know, I don't know. I mean, the way it is, um, I could have three colors and have like the door be one color and some trim be another color but I want it to be neutrals mm -hmm. now all these are going to be neutrals they're not going to be loud they're going to be neutrals and beige blue and gray are neutral colors anyway mm -hmm. so it depends on what kind of grays you want to get and I won't go dark gray but I want a pop of color to make it kind of look like and so I'm thinking of being in the door in that pop of color. I don't know. I'm at the beginning of it. I'm getting samples from Shaw. I talked to the counselor at Shaw, and she gives me samples. She gives me big samples of carpet, not just little baby ones. She gives me big samples. So I'm having, like, I'll probably get them this week. I got my first four colors from Home Depot today. I didn't even unbox them. They came right before I came here. So how sore is this? Medium. Medium. I know it's sick. I know there's a bad air in there, isn't there? Maybe we'll wait and see about getting off some of the skin. Okay, I'm just not gonna walk, okay? <laughs> well this is this won't hurt. This is the easy part right here. When your toenails have a lot of adhered cuticle on the nail plate, the moisture that the nail can absorb from perspiration of your foot can evaporate. And so the nail will stay moist. And then if it is moist and it gets squished and pressure put on it in the wrong places, it's gonna bend really easily. And that's why nails change shape. So when I do the electric file, you're going to see even more of the adhered skin so come off the nail plate. And I will yeah, give you a little bit more information then. Are you going to paint it yourself? I kind of like, I hire my girlfriend that paints, but I do all the prep. Okay. So, and then I help her paint. So I'm going to say... The prep is 100% me and my husband doing the prep. 
in the painting, I'm like 50%. Yeah, the um, cleanup is the worst. It's the, the prep work takes you longest. Yeah. It takes you longest. But when it comes to the packing and all that stuff, yeah. Here I'm using the diamond mini cuticle bit. You can watch very closely. Even though I pushed back the cuticle off the nail plate, there is a teeny tiny layer of skin still stuck to the surface. And this diamond bit does a great job at just buffing off the surface. That skin also can hold on to stain from perspiration and it keeps all that moisture in the nails. So if we get this skin off of her toenail, hopefully it won't hold as much perspiration and it will stop bending so easily into that unwanted shape. I went through all my files, I went through all my stuff. That was... And then I got rid of furniture, I donated some, and some I gave away. I won't, I won't have to pack up as much stuff in my living room. All right, let's talk about the inevitable glove comments. People love to use the terms PPE and universal precautions. They say things like, you need to wear gloves to protect your client. I want everybody who leaves me a comment of why aren't you wearing gloves to actually look up the term universal precautions. I've left it in comments before in past videos, but nobody ever reads that answer. So I want you to look it up. And I want you to look up how the integumentary system protects the body. The skin protects the body. Yes, she has an old injury to the skin, but it's not weeping. And I have no cuts or openings on my fingers or hands. And I am not touching the area with my fingers or hands. Some may say it's irresponsible of me not to wear them. Okay. That just in case. I should wear them to look more professional. You can't fake being professional by wearing gloves and I'm not a fraud. I'm not in a medical office. I'm simply giving a pedicure. If someone came in with a situation that I needed to wear gloves, I would send them home. Mm -hmm. Me too. Sorry, you were so nervous. It's because my feet are painful. You know, it's just, you go through all the surgeries of, you know, breaking my leg, and, you know, having bad inserts, losing an arch, having surgery, you know, and then my stupid toenails, it's, I've been through a lot of pain. Yeah. Sometimes you anticipate pain just because it's past pain. Right. So you have any kids? I have two teenage sons. Okay. That keep you busy. Yeah. You, do you live out here in Saline? Yeah. I live really close. I live like six minutes away. Okay. I love being close to my business. And how long have you been here? This year will be uh, 18 years. We opened in 2002. Wow. So you guys were here when the recession hit and everything. Mm -hmm. you had to go through all that. Messy, messy, messy. Sometimes 
I just need to spray this off so I can see a little bit better. I'm using isopropyl alcohol just to remove all the debris so I can see better. So they're not a lost hole, huh? Nope. I'm not gonna try to clip out any of that until after you soak again. Okay. I always rub the foot off with a towel to get off the rest of that callus remover. So when you go to file the foot, it's not all slippery. You actually do need a little bit of friction in between the file and the it's, foot. You know, keep that stuff like, you know, but yeah, I threw that. Turn your foot out to the side. Yes. Yeah. Just rest your leg in my hand. Look good with it too. There's my little office. There's my other dolls. Oh wow. There's my little vanity. It's pretty. And yeah, this is all my foul cabinet. Underneath there it's big drawers. My other foul cabinet is in my closet. I took my time on every thing that I picked out, every single thing. And then I had this light from when we lived in Redford. Um, now this is just, this is the carpet though that I picked out. Oh, pretty. It's, it's a real cool one. There is always more excess skin to remove after the foot comes out of the water for the second time. The foot goes in, out, in, out. While I'm working on one foot, the other foot is in the water getting soft. The excess skin turns white. That is how you know how much to remove. If you're trying to give a dry pedicure and filing with the electric file without soaking the foot, you are going to have a more difficult time deciding how much to remove and the person can get sore skin around their toes. So it is best to soak the feet. My goal here is to remove as much as that excess skin from around her toenails to make more space for that toenail to move back to its original position. It took a long time for these toenails to get squished where you know they are but they will change some but they won't change if they're running into a barrier
Yeah, that was good. It's like, you know, you need to, right? Next, I'm going to use the mini diamond cone bit just to get in those tiny tight really spaces to make sure everything is nice and clean around her nail. A lot to go through. But I think it turned out pretty. Do you think it turned out pretty? Oh, it's beautiful. Like when people say purple, I'm like, don't think of purple like cloud purple. No, think of it's like soft lavender. Soft lavender is purple. And there's four different colors. And I was like, that's, that's the way I wanted it to be. So I go in there now and it's just it's beautiful. It's peaceful. Mm -hmm, it's peaceful. So that's kind of like what I'm going for in my kitchen. I, I want it to be neutrals. And I don't know, I'm just starting to take pictures now because you can go on an app. You can go on the Bear app and download your pictures. Mm -hmm. And then you can pick out colors and then you can kind of like say, okay, how would that look? How would that look? And then, and then order the colors you think you want. I know there's thousands of you out there who love using the Imperial Feet products and have had great success with the nail mycosis solution for nail fungus and the athlete's foot solution for athlete's feet. If you haven't tried the urea foot balm, it is a fabulous product for dry skin and heels on the bottoms of the feet. And if you're having really hard calluses, we now have the corn and callus cream, which is amazing.
pretty. There's two black ones and two tabbies. And there's Hunter. So there's the kids are Hunter, Princess, Goldeneye, and Jade. And Goldeneye and Jade are black with uh, with either gold eyes or green eyes. And this is how little they were when I started taking care of them. I know they were tiny. And then my husband, he made a, he made a little cat house for me. That's okay. He made a little cat house for me last year. But yeah, he made a drop cage, and then I got trap cages for my groomer, and then we trapped three at a time. Here's the cat house. And it has like little heated floors. Um, that I know this tickles, sit, sorry. When they sit down, it heats up. And he ran electrical. And here's my little, here's my little tents on my porch. Oh wow, yeah. And those That's are the smart. same way. So yeah, I take care of you know, and then my parakeets. Um, they had babies five years ago. Oh, my two parakeets. The mom and dad have passed, but I still have two of the babies. They have three babies. Aww. One baby got egg bound, and I lost that baby when he was about two. And the mom and dad, they just grew up, and you know, they were like nine years old when they passed. First the mom went, and the dad went. But I still have two of the babies. I have never known anyone to have parakeets. Like, you know, my birds were just in love. They had a lot of pair of feet socks and Aww. they had three little babies. Cute. Yeah, so that's, and then my poodle is Butterscotch. She's going to be 15 and I had two poodles. My one poodle two years ago passed away. Um, his name was Cannoli. Aww. He had uh, a stomach infection, but he had heart disease. And it's not the heart disease that killed him. I had him on medication. It was, I couldn't get his teeth clean, even though I brushed his teeth and gave him a rinse. Mm -hmm. He got a stomach infection. So, and it was too, with his heart disease, it, you know, he was, he was almost 14 when he passed, so. All right. He was older than Mother Scotch by two years. Now when I pull this out, you're going to see the little indentation. It's going to be like a darker line. That's just from the pressure of that nail pushing yeah, into her nail bed. So you'll understand here in a second why she was trying to remove that pressure herself and why she injured herself. You know, you just can't get the right angle when you're trying to do it on yourself but you'll see when I go in slow motion how much stuff is actually compacted underneath. take my poodle and I put my poodle in my office in a new dog bed and I give her a bone so there's not like a cat poodle fight. Mm -hmm. And Princess loves being in the house in the morning. She just comes in for like five minutes and helps me carry out the food. It's like her she wants to be your helper. Thing. Yeah, it's like her favorite thing to do. Jay comes in too. Hunter, he won't let me pet him at all. I can get by him, and then Goldeneye can pet him on the head and the tail and stuff. Um, mine. Took that off. Yeah, I got it out. Oh my um, my cat that looked just like that. His name was Dodger, Aww. and we found him underneath of a deck of a restaurant that I was working at. Aww. And he wouldn't let you pick him up. That's why we named him Dodger, because he kept running from everybody. Scared. <laughs> yeah, but we had him for 18 years. Did he let you pick you up after 18 years? Was oh yeah, after happened? about six weeks. Okay. Yeah, he was very. Now Hunter, seeks, Hunter won't let me pat him. Now Jade, he'll kiss my nose for a treat. Oh. I'll like, he loves his milky treats, I call them. There's these treats that they, they say it tastes like milk, they're cat treats. 
and he loves those melon treats. And I'll just bend down on the carpet and I'll say, give me a kiss and he'll kiss my nose for a melon treat. <laughs> so I don't know, I mean, technically they're still feral. They do live outside, but they're spoiled feral cats. Right. And I, they're like some, I guess it all depends on yeah, if you have a plan every single day when you wake up, this is what I'm going to do today, this is what I'm going to do today, but how can you get bored? I mean, oh, and then I won a contest in the Detroit News. I take pictures, so I take pictures of all my flowers, and I won a contest last oh, year. Oh, nice. Yeah. So what did you win? I won a, pa a posy book. I won a posy book. I just put the, it on glass, too, the picture. Let me see. I just had it. There's a new company. You can take a picture, and they'll put on glass for you. They etch it. Mm -mm. Oh, it's the actual picture. Just it's the actual picture, and I just had it put on glass. So, my mom, I, I don't know. I post a lot of my flower pictures, you know, because I just, I, I mean, I am I a big gardener? No. Do I? Am I okay gardener? I like to plant bulbs. I like to plant like maybe a couple different flowers every year because I like taking pictures of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so mm -hmm. um, we used to do a vegetable garden and that's too much work. I just wanted to get done and mm -hmm. just my only job is maybe to water or to plant, you know. So I would post these pictures and, and uh, just relax, relax. See, here's my cat in the house at night. Anyway, um, so here's here's my oh wow that's picture. Beautiful. There's a posy book. Here's the picture. Oh wow, yeah, that's a great so picture. So they have like for 12 weeks. You just it has to be your own from your own garden, um, and you just you know you just apply online and just write news, and they pick out every week. They pick out someone to win, and then they put you in the newspaper. Oh, wow. Then you win a posy book, and at the end of the end of the year, or end of the contest after twelve weeks, they pick out the grand prize. Then you win a gift certificate to English Garden. Mine was the only close-up picture. Everyone else was like, they had the stream going and the hammock, like, yeah. like you know, like you know, no, that's too much work for me. Right. But um, I was just blessed. Just I was lucky to be the only close-up picture. And uh, I, honestly, it wasn't my best shot. I had shots that were even better. That you felt like were better. But I think it was because it was an old-fashioned rose bush. And then a lot of people didn't, like, you couldn't see this in the, couldn't see this in the um, newspaper because when they printed it it would be too it would be too fuzzy to see it but there's a bug in there oh wow see that little green bug oh i do see it yeah. see it yeah so there's a bug in there like they probably saw it but when in the newspaper shot yeah it just looks like part of the it just looks flower. like part of it you know so because i had other shots that were i thought were you know, and I like taking bird shots. It's shot from my... Wow. So, I do that, too. And also, I don't know, I keep my... Th I like that this is one of my hummingbird shots right here. It's my hummingbird shot. Yeah, it's good to have a hobby. So, that's like my gardening and... But I think I just plant flowers just because I, I like to take pictures of them.
Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to visit my channel. People like you are the reason for my success and I appreciate it so much. But remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel for all the latest videos. Remember it is free and I'll see you next time.